A few weeks before the start of fifth grade, when I was a happy and healthy 10-year-old, fresh off of four weeks of overnight camp, I woke up in my bed one morning, and I felt a strange snap inside my head on the left side. A few seconds later, a strange tingling sensation started creeping down the right side of my face. It continued traveling down my right arm, and then down the rest of the right side of my body, as if I was cut in half. By the time I reached my toes, that was it. In less than 30 seconds, I was completely paralyzed on my right side. The medical term for this is hemiplegia. It's what can happen to you when you have a stroke. But I had additional symptoms. About 30 minutes later, I lost peripheral vision in my right eye. And about 30 minutes after that, I had difficulty speaking, which is known as aphasia. And then about 30 minutes after that, I got a really, really bad headache. By that time, I was in the hospital. My neurologist ultimately diagnosed this as a severe and fluky form of a migraine headache. It's pretty rare. My recovery over the next six months restored all the sensation and the strength, but not entirely the control. So that's why I have a tremor on my right side. Now, since I was born right-handed, I spent the next year becoming a lefty. Now, I got to say, there's never a good time to stroke out. But doing it at age 10 definitely came with a degree of peril. I was desperately trying to fit in, and this was not making it any easier. But if we can zoom out for a minute, we realize that over people's lifetime, they are going to experience losses, setbacks, and challenges. The question is, how do you take these sources of weakness or potential devastation and turn them into something from which maybe you can draw some strength? In fact, I dare you to, to solve the riddle. How do you take your kryptonite and transform it into your superpower? Pay attention, I'm gonna give you a few clues. The first thing I figured out was that people would respond to me to my challenges in direct measure to how well I handled them. So if something was a problem for me, it was going to be a problem for them. And let me tell you, discomfort can be catchy, and I didn't want to spread that around any rooms. But I also figured out that this was absolutely not something that I could let hold me back. It was a little competitive, and I didn't want to get left behind by my classmates. Now, that's the thinking of a 10-year-old, but any age can tap into what drove it. And that was basically three things. Courage, positivity, and determination. For example, I knew that I was no longer going to be the first girl picked on teams in re at recess and in gym class like I had been before. And that hurt. But I told myself, you know what, at least I can still play. So I, I began to wonder, how far could I go living with this condition? I gradually began to find out, as I, as I figured out, how to do things with one hand, like typing, cracking eggs, and putting earring backings on, which is not easy. <laughs> but I also figured out all kinds of other life hacks and workarounds to get things done. And a couple of what I call my more clever examples are threading a needle with one hand. The secret is, you put the needle in a pincushion, you only need one hand. But I also figured out how to polish my own nails, since getting a manicure was a little, a professional manicure is a little awkward. Uh, the problem was polishing my left hand, and the way I did that was putting the brush on its side, and my fingernail painted the brush instead of the brush painting my nail. So, what you can detect here is a huge sense of accomplishment and ownership over my problems. I really began to feel like, I got this. In fact, I took it a little further. I felt as if there were something like superpowers that were enabling me to overcome adversity. In the course of a single day, I could string together numerous small victories, even what I called minor miracles. And this made me feel really good. Except when I was 25 years old, something happened that finally stretched my superpowers to their breaking point. I had just given birth to my son, and in the hours afterward, I realized 
Taking care of a baby is a two-handed job, if ever there was one. And I had no previous experience with babies. Uh, and all I had been thinking about was what I needed to buy, like the changing table, uh, the stroller, the crib, what color to paint his room. Would a son help me out the same way a daughter might if I grow old and I'm alone? Anyway, <clears throat> my superpowers completely failed me. <laughs> and uh, the truth was, I couldn't give him a bottle, I couldn't change his diaper, and I had no idea how I was going to dress him without hurting him. So the next morning, my obstetrician came in my room and tried to console me because I was absolutely hysterical. He said, listen, uh, all my patients feel inadequate. They wish they had three hands to get the jobs done. That didn't make me feel any better. <laughs> but then he told me the story of Jim Abbott. He's a major league baseball pitcher who has an arm that ends at his wrist. He played for 10 seasons. He just had his own workarounds and hacks to get the job done. Now, that shut down my tears. So basically, over the next few weeks, I figured out how to get the jobs done, and I successfully was able to feed, diaper, and dress my baby. Now, he's in law school. But... <laughs> Thank you. But there was another layer to my issues. I had another son a few years later, and as the boys were growing up, I began to think, am I going to be a source of embarrassment to them because I'm so clearly flawed? I shared this with my dad one day, and he said something very surprising. His father's from Germany, and he had a German accent. But my dad really wasn't aware of it until a friend came over and met his dad and asked him about it. It caught my dad off guard. The accent really hadn't registered. So he was just accustomed to his dad. So what he was telling me by way of comparison is that my kids see me as fully functioning. To them, I'm still Wonder Woman. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I had a ton of evidence proving this because they've never ever offered to help me in any way. <laughs> About eight years ago, I decided that I wanted to stretch my superpowers further than I had ever stretched them before. And that involved entering a bodybuilding competition. So um, I knew this was going to be difficult because you have to strike poses and hold steady. And I just decided I was going to do it anyway. And let's just say I survived. And a few years after that, I started doing stand-up comedy, where I went around to open mics, and I delivered five-minute sets that always included one minute of what I called my stroke jokes. And those are basically bits where I poked fun at myself, like noting, um, I'm not an alcoholic, I swear, even though I kind of shake like one. <laughs> so, I want to offer, as, well, as a subject matter expert uh, in superpowers, I wanted to offer others with challenges uh, a few suggestions to help them develop their own. And the first thing is to recall that nobody is judging you, only you are judging yourself. So you need to stop that. The next thing is that that's actually a lie. People are judging you <laughs> all the time on how well you handle your challenges, and they will respond accordingly. So the idea is you control the climate surrounding your challenges. Uh, the next thing I'd suggest is having an elevator pitch that basically describes what's wrong. It will arrest your listeners every time. So mine goes something like this. Uh, no, it's not what you think. I don't have Tourette's or Parkinson's. I'm not cold. I'm not nervous. I had something similar to a stroke when I was 10, and it left me with this tremor. And no, it doesn't shake when I sleep. And the last thing I'd like to share is that you should always think about what you can do, not what you can't do. Because you know what? Nobody can do everything. And um, I'd like to conclude by posing a question, partly because you're not allowed to ask one. Um, and that is, if I could be cured, would I want to be? There is a treatment called deep brain stimulation, and it would probably wipe out my tremor. 
I've known about it for probably 20 years. The answer clearly is no. The truth is that having this trauma is inconvenient and sometimes uncomfortable, but it is the thing from which I draw my strength and my superpowers. And if you eliminate it, you take away from me the thing from which I draw courage and confidence. And if that's truly how you feel, if you can push past your potential boundaries, then you can be certain you have successfully claimed, transformed weakness into some serious badass strength. Thank you.